a summary of the synthesis and reactions of acyl halides, what we're talking about in this lesson. And this is the first in a series of videos. We're going to go back through each of the individual functional groups of the carboxylic acids or carboxylic acid derivatives and just kind of organize all the reactions they do. And uh, a big chunk of them is really going to be tied up in this interconversion of the carboxylic acid derivatives. So, and then some of them are also going to be like reactions with organometallics and hydride reduction. And so a lot of this is going to be a little bit repetitive and we're going to kind of whip right through it. And along the way though, we will sprinkle in just a handful of new reactions for some of the functional groups. Now this lesson is part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new one, subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. All right, so acyl halides here, if you are following along on the study guide here, we really only have one major way to synthesize an acyl halide. So, and we covered it, love, you know, back uh, on our lesson on nucleophilic acyl substitution. Take your carboxylic acid, that's your, uh, your fuel for making acyl halides here, and that carboxylic acid, you're just add, gonna add either thionyl chloride, SOCl2, or PBr3 to convert it back into the corresponding acyl chloride or acyl bromide. So that's review, that's not new, but that's our only really way to, you know, synthesize something, and then, uh, a good chunk of the reactions that we do with acyl halides are, have all been covered with nucleophilic acyl substitution as well. We know how to convert your acyl halide into the anhydride, the ester, the amide, or a carboxylic acid, or a carboxylate. And so I've organized those for you on your study guide there and stuff like that, but that's all it really is. So if we start with going to the anhydride here, so typically you're either gonna do it uncatalyzed or base catalyzed. With an acid chloride, you're not really gonna do the acid catalyzed reagents uh, too often in practice. And so I haven't included them there, even though they were on the chart here. And so add the appropriate carboxylic acid or the appropriate carboxylate, and you can make the anhydride. Same thing analogously with the ester. So the alcohol acid combination, acid catalyzed, not again, normally going to be done with the acyl halide. We don't need that acid catalyst. And so it's not routinely done that way. And so I've only included really the uncatalyzed reaction with the appropriate alcohol or the base catalyzed reaction with the appropriate alkoxide ion instead. Same thing for the amide, not generally going to do the acid catalyzed reagents here. So the uncatalyzed reaction would be the appropriate amine, or you could do the base catalyzed version with the corresponding uh, appropriate amide ion. And then finally, if you want to make a carboxylic acid or a carboxylate, so for the carboxylic acid, you just add water. And again, acid catalyzed H3O plus, not routinely done, so I didn't include it there, but theoretically it would work. So, and then hydroxide would get you the carboxylate. And the idea is that if you uh, add hydroxide, it would replace the chlorine with the OH, which would form a carboxylic acid, but because that's happening in a highly basic solution, it would immediately get deprotonated, getting you that carboxylate. And once again, we'll see for all the carboxylic acid derivatives, so that H3O plus will get you the carboxylic acid and OH minus will get you the carboxylate. So that's the review of all those interconversion of carboxylic acid derivatives. So let's review the organometallic reactions here as well. So now we'll look at the two reactions with organometallics here. And we've got the Grignard reagent, organomagnesium halide. And then we've got the Gilman reagent and organocuprate here, or lithium dialkyl cuprate, you might hear it called. And so the Grignard's a little stronger reagent. And so uh, initially it turns out both of these are gonna form the ketone. You're simply just gonna have a methyl group, the nucleophile in both cases, replace the chlorine. And so that's the initial reaction in both cases. And this forms a ketone. Now, in the case of the Gilman reagent, the less reactive one, once you form the ketone, it's not going to react with that ketone and you're done. That ketone is your product. But for a Grignard, Grignards also react with ketones and aldehydes and things of a sort. And so this is going to keep reacting. We'll get a second equivalent. Notice I put excess here. So, and in this case, a second equivalent of the Grignard adds here, forming an alkoxide, and then your acid workup step, which might be water or H3O plus, depending on your textbook and professor, and you get the corresponding alcohol. And so we've had a chance to add two equivalents of the Grignard to get here. And again, this is review. We covered this back in the uh, uh, section on organometallics earlier in this chapter, just organizing it accordingly here. So the last two reactions we'll look at for acyl halides here are both hydride reductions. And you got your standard hydride reduction with either lithium aluminum hydride, but sodium borohydride would work for an acyl halide as well. So, and this is gonna occur in two steps. And your first step is gonna first convert that acyl halide into an aldehyde, but that's just gonna keep reacting. Not a good way to get a good yield of this with lithium aluminum hydride. So it's gonna keep reacting, add an additional hydrogen and get you the corresponding alcohol. And notice I drew the two H's in here. Normally we wouldn't draw those. You'd just see this and you get your corresponding alcohol. So there's your lovely reaction there. And then we've also got uh, your special reagent for lithium, uh, 
uh, tritert-butoxy aluminum hydride here. And so this lovely bulky reagent at low temperatures allows you to stop at the aldehyde. And so just like we saw with organometallics, so with a standard organometallic like a Grignard, you add once. So with a special organometallic, a little less reactive one, like the uh, organocuprates, it only adds uh, once. Did I say that right? So the Grignard adds twice. <laughs> if you want to add once, you got to add that organocuprate. Same thing here. Standard hydride reagent is going to add twice to an acyl uh, halide no matter what. So whereas your bulky one at low temperatures, we can stop it to get the aldehyde adding only once. If you have found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Best thing you can do to make sure that other students get to see this lesson as well. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you are looking for practice problems on carboxylic acids and their derivatives, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.